Jade Raymond, and I'm here at GVC. So let's talk a little bit about what it's been like heading up the newest Toronto studio for Ubisoft. It's been really exciting. So I don't think many people have built a studio from scratch uh, within three and a half years and shipped a big AAA. Um, so that was really exciting. You know, we were getting over 100 people in each year. And, uh, you know, it's not only all of the energy into recruiting and finding the right talent, but also creating that feeling of teamwork and getting everyone working efficiently together and feeling like a family. Um, it's been fun. How have you seen Toronto kind of emerge as a video game hub? Well, Toronto is really exciting because it really is a hub for the indie developers. A lot of really great indie games uh, are being done there. There's great support from the government, not only for companies like Ubisoft, but really anyone, you know, any developer who wants to make games can get the same kind of benefits. And so that means there's a lot of indie developers just going out on their own and experimenting. And it means that we have a really interesting community um, and a good exchange with different people looking at different problems, different, you know, making different kinds of games. And so it means, uh, you know, IG meetings are exciting in Toronto. <laughs> when it comes to your own background in games, how has that helped you with uh, spearheading this studio? Um, well, I think, you know, it's, it's all about the games ultimately, and I think in order to provide the right infrastructure and help teams be successful in making great games, I think to understand, you know, what it takes and, and put the right things in place to make sure that they're getting the support they need to ship the best game um, is definitely helpful. When it comes to Ubisoft, the studios normally work together. Can you kind of explain how that works with your studio working in conjunction with like a Red Storm or other studios as you create these big games? Yeah, so on Splinter Cell Blacklist, we worked with a team in Montreal, and we also worked with our Shanghai studio. Um, so we have best practices. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. On Assassin's Creed was one of the first brands that was doing co-production, and now we're applying it on all of our big titles. Um, and typically, we set up a team on the core team that's just there to facilitate communication and that kind of collaboration and make sure that it runs smoothly. Uh, so it does take a whole different level of communication and support that you wouldn't really anticipate. How hands-on are you able to be when you when you have these very large teams that are working on these titles? Well, I think you really do have to cut the game up into components that are standalone and give teams autonomy to create something great within their own sandboxes. You know, whether they're working on site or off site, I mean, even if you, you know, even if they're in the same building, I think having 200 people at once, you can't really be hands on and divide it up into tasks. You have to create sub teams and make sure that they have autonomy to create the great game. And I think ultimately where you can have an impact is when you play the actual gameplay, you know, in the actual game as it's being iterated on and see the results. I think it's impossible to do it based on tasks or numbers or charts that are graphing how progress is going. You've got to um, judge the real game that's being developed. We now have seen the launch of the PS4 and the Xbox One. What are your thoughts about what that brings to the table creatively for you guys as you develop titles? To me, it's the new level of connectivity, um, and you know that's really what players want. I think it's all about communities these days. It's also about self-expression. It's also about how do I play the game? What's my game experience? How do I share it with people? And obviously, with the integration of Twitch, um, you know, and different ways to share the games that you're playing, even if they're single player, to have an influence on other people's games, uh, asynchronous play. I think all of those things that have to do with the connected experience are really the evolution for this new generation. Another trend we're seeing is the second screen experience. How does that influence how you create games now? I think there are a lot of interesting opportunities in terms of second screen experience, but I think you know, you've know you got to tread carefully. It's not just because you're making a new game on these platforms that it has to have one. I think you have to come up with a compelling uh, feature that really requires a second screen or adds a significant you know, gameplay feature that's really more fun. Uh, so I think it can also be a trap if you're not taking the right approach. <laughs>